everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to be talking about the inquiry process continuum and the different levels of inquiry. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. I'm going to be talking about the different levels of inquiry, which actually sit on a continuum. So let me just move myself out of the way and describe some of the different levels here. Uh, we start with direct instruction. Sometimes this is called the confirmation stage, where you are actually giving your students, transmitting, delivering information such as facts and skills, and they could be lectures and mini lessons through transmission. So very much teacher directed. And there will be situations in the classroom where you will have to employ direct instruction and to help your students move along their learning journey. Now, the next stage or level in the process continuum is structured inquiry. And this is when we have predictable outcomes and predictable pathways. And we're still not telling our students the answers, but perhaps we're giving a lot more scaffolding holding and prompts to help them along so that they don't get too frustrated. They can still move along their learning journey. The next stage is the guided inquiry stage where there's predictable outcomes and unpredictable pathways. So your students may use different lines of inquiry, but you still have a common goal. You've got certain mathematical concepts that you want them to actually understand and to arrive at. And in the guided approach, there's a lot less scaffolding, less prompting, and uh, students actually have more agency in this stage. And then we have the open inquiry level, unpredictable outcomes, unpredictable pathways. This is very much student directed. It is when you give your students, for example, personal projects, or it could be an exhibition, it could be a personal exploration where your students are actually directing the whole journey from beginning to end. Now, I put these levels on a continuum because I think even within a lesson, you're going to be moving back and forth along the continuum, depending on your students' readiness, confidence level, and when appropriate. So for example, you might start off with some guided inquiry, but feel that a group of students or one particular student needs a little bit more scaffolding and move to structured. Or within a lesson, you may have to be giving some direct instruction of low level facts and skills that the students actually need in order to solve the problem or in order to address the provocation or scenario. So you're going to be moving along this continuum even within a lesson. And I think that's called the art and science of teaching that nuanced art of when we actually know when to intervene and when to let go. So it's important to know when to let go and let your students arrive at deep conceptual understandings. But as we know, there is a fine line between frustration and challenge, and we don't want our students to walk away completely frustrated from the lesson and not having learned anything and made progress in their learning. So I hope you found this visual uh, helpful in terms of placing the levels of inquiry on a continuum and that it's very nuanced and we move back and forth along this continuum. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the section below. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.